All right, well, good morning. And these will be the last, uh, the last videos uh, that you see from this semester, uh, if you're one of the people that are watching these. Um, so I hope that the videos have helped this semester. I think that they're an effective tool given the situation for what we've got. And um, uh, today, the videos will be focusing on preparing for your final exam. So up on Blackboard, I put a mock final exam. It's a real final exam that was given uh, a couple years ago in this class and the instructions have changed, the format have changed, um, the grading instructions have changed, the format has changed more towards true-false uh, and less short answer but uh, it's the same material so I'm going to take you through this mock exam here in this first video I'm going to go through just a couple problems uh, on arithmetic and then I'll make a new video like I've done in the past for another small set of questions and it's all going to go rather quick. So you can watch these as much as you want or as many times as you need. Um, we'll go ahead and get started right away. Um, so there we go. Um, so this first question just says to perform the following calculation and simplify. Uh, there's multiple ways to do this uh, from the beginning. But right away, what I will do is uh, rewrite the top of this fraction um, to have a common denominator. I know that 11 is the same as 33 out of 3. I'm writing it that way because this fraction has a 3 in the denominator. And now that they have the same denominator, I can just sub do the subtraction. 33 minus 2, which is 31. That's all over 3 now. Haven't touched the other denominator yet. But at this point, what we're going to do is remember that uh, nobody divides fractions, everybody multiplies fractions. So this is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that denominator. And here, it's just straight multiplication. 2 times 31 is 62. 5 times 3 is 15. And that's it. That's the first problem. Okay, this is sufficient uh, for showing every step. This is sufficient. Um, you don't need to explicitly, explicitly write 33 minus 2 in, in this next step, you know. Um, all right, so for the next one, perform the following calculation and simplify. Um, yeah, again, lots of ways to go about this one. I'll go ahead and, and show you my steps. So. Uh, first, I'm going to take care of everything that's inside the furthest uh, nested parentheses. So this one is 5, 2 plus 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. Right? We always start from the inside out with nested parentheses. And so I'm just doing that right away here. Um, so this is 5 minus, and now I'll do this multiplication that comes next in the order of operations. So this would be 4 times 3, which is 12. From there, we've got 1 minus 5 minus 12. We see these two are grouped together, so let's do this subtraction. So it's negative 7. And then we've got minus a negative 7, so that's 1 plus 7, which is 8. Okay, now showing most of these steps would be sufficient. Um, maybe leaving this one out would be okay. Um, yeah, most of these steps will be sufficient. I just need to see that you you know what's going on for problems like this. Yeah, so that one's not too bad. Um, I started as far in as I could, and then I worked my way out according to order of operations. But you could have started by distributing the negative sign first, and then you could have done what's inside the parentheses. You could have sub, you know subtracted this one minus five from the beginning, and then you could have added in this four times three. They're all good ways of doing it. For the next problem, we've got a multiple choice question. On the on this final, uh, I didn't put any multiple choice questions. I put true false questions instead. So this one's a little bit out of sorts, but that's okay. Uh, it's good to know what these are. So what is a rational number and what is an integer? So remember an integer is any number that is like a whole number Right, so it's it's one, two, three, etc. It also includes zero, 
And the integers also include the negatives of these natural numbers. So these are the integers. It's this infinite list. What is a rational number? A rational number is any number that can be written like this, a over b, where b is not 0. Okay, But a and b are both integers. So they're, they're an integer. So a and b are in the integers. OK? So you just take any two of these numbers, and you take a fraction of them, a ratio of them. And that gives you the rational numbers. So the ratio of any two integers, so long as the bottom number you choose is not 0. So which of these is a rational number? It's a ratio of integers, but it's not an integer. So pi is irrational. It cannot be written as a fraction of integers. That's something that we learned a long time ago. Uh, square roots of uh, roots of prime numbers in general are irrational. So it's not that one. Negative 19 appears to be a good candidate. Because I can, I can think of that like this, negative 19 divided by 1. That's a ratio of two integers, right? So it's a rational number. But that is also an integer. You know, it's a little bit further down this list here on the left. So we can't choose that one. Uh, by process of elimination, it's got to be D. You might be asking yourself, how is this a ratio? Well, any repeating decimal, any repeating decimal is actually a rational number. Okay, and uh, to see that you could, you could, on a calculator perhaps you could take this fraction. If you want to convince yourself that this number is a is a rational number, take this fraction and add 2 to it. Okay, 316 divided by 999 and you'll see what you get is 2.316316316 etc etc. If you ever have a uh, a section of decimals that repeat, you can take that repeating section and divide it by the number of nines that there are digits in the repeating section and you'll get that correct fraction that that uh, represents that repeating decimal portion. For example, point 0.1 repeating is the same as 1 ninth. Point 0.11, or let me write it like this, point 0.12 repeating is equal to 12 over 99. And you can keep doing this for any sort of repeating number. Okay. That was a quick short video, but uh, that's the first three problems, and I hope that helps. I'll be back in a little bit for the next one.